There we go. Morning. Um, I'm gonna take you on a journey to day 26 of the 30 day challenge. Sunrise challenge that is. So I'm gonna take you to sunrise 26. How about that? I think you're gonna enjoy it. If I can keep the camera still somewhat. Uh, going to go out to my family's land. Come with me on the journey. First things first, we're going to grab some unhealthy grub. As you can see. So I just got some really, really bad news. I left my coffee at the house. I reached down into the middle of the console the one cup holder I have, where it always is. It's not here. Don't think you understand what this means. Well, I'm here at my parents' house, if this ever wants to focus, and I'm gonna get some firewood and then make my way back to where we're gonna set up for the filming. All right, I am in the middle of my family's field right now. You can see the horizon is starting to have a little glow. I've got about another half mile to walk, um, and then I'm gonna try to set up a little fire and get ready for this sunrise. So you can't even see my face. I look like one of those protected witnesses. <laughs> but anyway, beautiful so far on the horizon there. So we've almost made it here. Um, going to a location I spent a lot of time at growing up as a kid, playing paintball, building forts, having parties, shooting guns, <laughs> you name it. But it probably happened back here. It's a huge tree that has a split inside it. Anyway. I think right here's where we're gonna do this thing. I've gotta get set up. All right, I'm pushing a little bit of the low light capability of this Canon, my new EOS R. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to let you know that this, uh, growing up over here where I'm setting up is a huge tree that we used to use as a fort and has a lot of memories back here. It's kind of why I chose the spot. Um, we're facing, of course, the east here and you can see the silhouettes of the trees. And then if I go over here, I don't know if you'll be able to pick it out, um, but there's silhouette of the barn and the grain bin as well. So I'm about three quarter of a mile away from either gravel road, um, the one going east and west and the one going north and south. And so anyway, getting set up here, I'm probably gonna get a fire going because even though I'm really warm from, uh, from making that um, journey in Carhartts and carrying a bunch of stuff, uh, that heat is going to wear off eventually. And I'm probably gonna be here for a good hour or more to wait for that sunrise to get in a good spot. So here we go, better start filming.
You remember earlier when I said I forgot my coffee? Well, I did. But, thankfully, my parents have coffee at their place in a Keurig, so made a quick batch before I headed out, and uh, all is not lost. Now, when you're creating a fire, what you want to do is get a lot of kindling, right? Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is light a spark. Or just use a lighter that I think is out of out of fluid. Funny enough, <laughs> may have to light a spark. Never fear. Backup plan is here. Oh. What's that old saying? A man who splits wood, warms himself twice, something like that. That one got me. That ain't a knife. This here is a knife. You know, after living in the city for six years, lived in Ventura County out in Southern California and lived in LA County after that. It's nothing like getting back on the family farm. And even though I'm nowhere, you know, close to being in a spot like in Montana or Alaska, you know, some true wilderness, it is great to get back uh, back outdoors, back out in nature at the very least, enjoy creation, even enjoy something as simple as building a little fire. <laughs> it's amazing the, the simple things in life like this are what really bring more joy than 
millions of dollars and things like that. I've never had millions of dollars, so I can't say for sure, but I'd have to think that the happiest people in the world, even if they have money, are those that enjoy the simple things. So that's my little take. All right, there it is. We got number 26 right there. All right, well, as you've probably seen, if I've shown the video or not, this fire is uh, <laughs> it's pretty much run its course. There's so much frost on the ground and stuff that find any wood that would take um, to the fire that's bigger in size uh, was pretty, pretty well impossible. I've even used my supply of a pizza box. But hey, you know, the more I burn, the less I have to carry back. Um, I guess now would be a good time to show you the fort that my cousin and I built with my dad. Um, never did finish it. We were hoping to build something pretty luxurious, you know. You can see um, that this beam, we did not put it in, you know, tilting, tilting to the south there. But what has happened is Little Creek um, has eroded so much that this this tree this tree probably doesn't have 20 more years. Probably doesn't have 10 more years, depending on how the weather goes um, these next few years. And it could very well just fall off, you know. But it'd be amazing to know what age this tree is but yeah this is the little hollow part um i don't know when that must have happened must have happened a long time ago maybe it got struck by lightning or something while it was growing a lot of excursions back here uh playing you know with bb guns paintball guns sticks for that matter <laughs> uh, had my friends back here a lot had a few parties back here and um, would camp back here sometimes. Anyway, some good memories. <clears throat> good memories in tree forts. There's, there's an interesting story I want to tell you. One time during deer season, I don't know why I thought I would get a deer over here, but uh, came out here, came back to the tree fort, and I knew for sure I wasn't going to get a deer as soon as I noticed that my Jack Russell Terrier freckles had a had joined me for the journey so i gave up on that but i you know i sat around i thought maybe i'll see something you know see some movement or whatever and sure enough i did because as i had seen her um on this tree line over here she was probably 20 meters out or so i was standing probably right where i'm at right now and i had a just a 20 gauge shotgun and I noticed out of the corner of my eye, kind of up further on the ridge there, on the tree line, some movement, some big movement. Um, not like a squirrel, right? But I saw the silhouette of something a lot bigger than a squirrel. And I was like, crap, that's a coyote. I call them coyotes, people call them coyotes, whatever. That's a coyote. And so I booked it because this coyote was stalking Freckles and Freckles wouldn't have had a chance. Like I said, she was a Jack Russell Terrier. She was all of, you know, a foot tall. And here's this coyote that evidently was pretty hungry because he didn't notice me, but was fixated on Freckles and was going, moving through this tree line. And I ran probably 20 meters and then stopped and just shot toward the tree line, away from Freckles, obviously. Um, scaring the coyote and unbeknownst to Freckles, um, 
saving her life. <laughs> anyway, she um, she booked it into the tree line and picked up the scent, and so we, you know, that coyote was long gone, so we never did find the coyote, but saved Freckle's life, so that was a good day. You know how like you see survivalists or you see outdoors people, they're always grabbing like Nutri-Grain bars and um, cliff bars and all that kind of stuff? Well, <clears throat> I like to one-up them on nutrition. That's where it's at, folks. Donuts. Plenty of, uh, plenty of fiber here. Plenty of carbs, you know, keep that energy flow. 500 calories per serving. So one serving six donuts, that won't be a problem. Um, good fats. Yeah, so anyway, it's my secret weapon, donuts. Don't tell anybody. All right, well, it is that time to get going. This is the latest I've ever really stayed. It was a little warmer temperature-wise, so probably 27 degrees. I don't know what the wind chill would have been, but... Uh, it was more so warmer because I had a longer hike. And then after that, I'd really been working on a fire the whole morning, just keeping a little little fire going. So that kept me warmer than the fire itself, actually. So that's been enjoyable. So yeah, today was definitely the most enjoyable um, so far. This one was a lot more geared toward my heart. <laughs> Love getting out. Uh, I'd like to get back to camping after a long break from living in California for six years. It's time to get back to some of these basic and simple get greatly enjoyable things in life. So, this sunrise challenge has really done a lot for me. It's uh, taught me, as I've said before, about discipline and made me think about, you know, the film industry and those who participate in that and work in that as their main source of income. Um, now it's given me the opportunity to, uh, more so the excuse, I guess you could say, to get out and do things I used to do when I was a kid and really enjoy it. Can't wait to do the same thing with my kids. Uh, my two boys, looking forward to starting camping this year with my oldest son. He's gonna be four in April. Get him started while he's young. Well, I think I'll end it with that. Um, yeah, just an enjoyable sunrise. Hope everybody's doing well. Looking forward to wrapping this thing up in four days. Who knows, it may go longer. I don't know yet. But anyway, uh, yeah, it was an enjoyable one. Thanks for watching. Peace.